Yo yo, what's up you guys, it's K8 here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a multi-band saturator stock plugin effect in Ableton. So, if you if you know how to group and map things in Ableton, this will be really, really easy to follow. It's very, very basic. If you're not familiar with any of that kind of stuff, because maybe you're new to Ableton or just never tried it, um, then you'll probably get a good idea of how to do that now. It's really, really easy. It's one of the fundamental easy things to do in Ableton that allows you to innovate and create new things. So this rack here that I've created is basically a multi-band saturator effect. So it's kind of like Fat Filter Saturn. Um, I think that's what it's called. I don't know. Um, I know I have that plugin uh, on 32-bit, but when I was looking for it on 64-bit, now that I've changed over to 64-bit, I, I couldn't find it. So I just decided to make it with stock Ableton plugins. So I'll show you guys how to make this from scratch in a sec. But before we do that, I would just want to play you a, a little mid bass example of what this does and how it sounds. The settings are a little bit tweaked to bring out the high and mid. Uh, so let's go ahead and listen to that. So as you heard, it's a big difference. It uh, obviously brings a lot of energy and saturation into this, and saturation is a great way to make something seem louder and get that harmonic distortion and la la la. You know why saturation is awesome. So I love using saturation, and I really love using multiband effects because it's a great way to control and shape the sound more the way I like. So instead of just applying saturation to all frequencies, I can really choose how much I want in the low frequencies, how much I want in the mid, and how much I want in the high. So pretty much uh, these buns here, we're going to make this from scratch right after I explain what the buns do, um, pretty much allow me to control the saturators in the different ranges. So the blue buns represent the low range controls, and the orange represents the mid range controls, and the yellow represents the uh, obviously the high range controls. So some of the things I like to map are things like volume. So I like, I have the low volume, mid volume, and high volume all mapped. So that way I can kind of tweak this a little bit more. And then the other things I mapped were things like the saturator drive. So right here, that would be this button on the saturator, the drive. And some of the other things I mapped is like the saturator dry wet, but I call it mix uh, on the bun. So this is the low saturator mix. So when I pull this down, if I'm clicked on that range, you can see that button going down. So I've just gone ahead and done the, the same thing for the mid. So I have the mid sat mix, which represents the, the dry wet there. Then the mid sat drive, which of course is a drive. And then I ran out of buns, so I decided just to do the high saturation drive and not the high saturation mix. And I have all the saturators set on medium curve, but we'll get to that in a sec when we're making this from scratch. So now you can kind of see what all the buns do and why I like those controls because the, the mix and the drive are pretty much the two important things that I need in a saturator. And other than that, I just control the volumes to kind of just balance the sound out. So now the amount of control that I have on reshaping this sound with saturation is, is insane. Like comparing it to just using one saturator, now I have a lot of options on what I can do. So let's go ahead and just make this from scratch. All right, so the first thing you'll need if you're doing this from scratch is just to go to your audio effects. And of course you could replace the multiband compressor or the saturator with higher end plugins if you wish to. Um, you know, that's, there's nothing stopping you from replacing even the saturator with different types of plugins. Like maybe you want to create a multiband reverb, multiband, um, I don't know, delay, multiband, whatever. Like just, you could replace the effect with anything. So we're just going to use the saturator because I just, again, wanted to create a Fat Filter Saturn type plugin. So uh, we're going to just grab the multiband standard comp. So we're just going to open this up, go into the presets and get that out. So this is pretty much the, the basic multiband setting, which doesn't have compression or anything like that. And let's go ahead and find a saturator. So we're just going to grab any old saturator. I like to set it to medium curve. And the reason why I like doing that is because the medium curve uh, isn't too isn't too extreme of a setting and it's not too mild of a setting. So if I left this on analog clip, 
it's very soft. And if I put this on Wave Shaper or actually a digital clip, you know, it's it's in a very extreme setting. So medium curve is just as it implies, it's a medium curve. It's kind of in between all these different settings. And from here, I can just fix the drive and set the mix the way I want. And I'll be happy with my result. So what we do here from now is just pretty much group these two together. So we just select them both, pressing shift, and then we press command G if you're on Mac. And we're just going to go ahead and open up the chains list and the macros list. So the macros will set last. And what we're going to do is just go ahead and duplicate this chain twice. And we're just going to do that right now without changing anything because we want these to all be exactly the same. And now from here, uh, we could just go ahead and turn off map. And we can just recolor these. So I'll color this green and uh, blue. I'm trying not to make, make this ugly or anything, but it looks like I already have. And uh, let's go with black. Sure, why not? And let's rename these low, mid, high. So I can rename this low and then mid. And you kind of get the idea. So that way I can tell what they are and what they're supposed to be. And that comes pretty useful for, you know, once you get used to using this effect. So I have hidden this, so let's open that up. So now the important thing is to split the frequencies. So we're gonna go ahead and solo the low, and then we're gonna also solo the low on the multiband setting. So that way everything matches. So when we click on low, we're just gonna go ahead and solo it, and then solo the low here. And then we'll do the same with the mid. We'll click on mid, we'll solo it, and then solo the mid here. And then click on high, solo, solo. So that way, you know, if we actually solo these ranges, we only hear those frequencies in that range. And that's the whole idea of this. And from here now, the saturator is just something that we map to our liking. So we can map the, the drive of the low and map the, the dry wets and all that. So let's go ahead and map all of these volumes to the same knob. So that way I can create a master volume of this whole rack. So now that they're all mapped to the same thing, I just, uh, I can press Control R over this little text and I can just go to master vol volume. So that's really useful because these saturators do tend to get loud, especially when you start driving them up high and at 100% mix. So let's click on low, let's start there and let's just click on map and let's go ahead and get the drive out and let's get the dry wet in there. So let's go ahead and recolor these green right now so that way we can come back to these and not get lost so let's go ahead and do that and let's just go ahead and finish this because i'll pretty much do the same process for the next two ranges so what i would call drive this button right here i would call this my my low sat drive so that way i know that this is for the low saturator and that's my drive and for the dry wet, I would just call that mix. So that makes it easy. So I would call that low saturator mix. And I would pretty much repeat the process on the, mo uh, the mid and the high. So pretty much I click on mid, click on map, and make sh making sure that I'm really clicked on mid, uh, mid. So I always click on there twice. And I just kind of repeat the process. So I get the drive in there, get the dry wet in there. And I'll color those so that I know what they are. I'm not gonna rename them because you already know what I'm gonna name them. So the thing about this is, when you just recently map something, the settings are pulled down all the way. So what you wanna do is just go ahead and click on the text, put these all at zero really quickly. So um, I'm setting all these amounts to zero. That's where I need everything to be. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much initialized setting from here. And I would do the same on volume. So now this is pretty much all the settings are uh, actually, I would put the, the mixes up to 100%. So I would put the mixes at 100 and the drives at 0 uh, dB and the master volume or my volumes at 0. So that way everything is initialized and I can go ahead and save this setting now and just bring it up another time. So if you're not familiar with Ableton Racks, you can save these. And even if you're using third-party plugins or anything like that or a bunch of plugins or groups within groups or even drum racks, you can save that and recall it later. So this took a while to make and I'm not gonna wanna always make that. So what I would do is I would just name this something. So I would just click on this part of the rack right here, press Control R or Command R, and I would just rename it multi-band saturator, blah, blah, blah. 
And what I would do is just dump this into my Ableton Racks folder. And this is just the folder I created on my computer and added in my, pl in, in my places. So this could be on my desktop, my document section, wherever I want. I just call it Ableton Racks. And then when I open up Ableton, I add folder, find that folder, add it here, and it has all my Ableton Racks. And Ableton Racks are small. They, they don't take up any size at all. And it's cool to know where this folder is because then you can transfer it to other people or transfer it to your other computers. So now that I want to save this rack, all I got to do is just drag this over to my Ableton Racks folder and then boom, there it is. And if I want to recall it, I just drag it out uh, from there and it's the exact same rack and I can just start tweaking it from there. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Thanks guys for watching and of course.